Welcome everyone. I am talking about hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia can be classified according to their severity by the lab result from mild 5.5 to 6, moderate 6.1 to 6.9, severe from 7, uh, which is more than 7 millimole per liter. The causes of hyperkalemia are the main cause is renal failure because of decrease in the excretion of potassium. Drugs like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, IC inhibitor, beta blocker, digoxin, succamethonium. Rhabdomyolysis. The rhabdomyolysis because of destruction of the cells and excretion of the secretion of potassium. Badness. The badness could happen and lead to uh, increase in the secretion. The same thing. Metabolic acidosis because of exchange with the hydrogen and the potassium goes shifts into the, the vascular system. Addison's disease. What are the clinical features of hyperkalemia? The clinical manifestations of hyperkalemia are mainly due to derangement of the membrane depolarization. Features include muscle weakness, mainly muscle weakness. Then paresthesia, hypotonia, areflexia, there will be ascending paralysis in which the patient may get respiratory failure, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Diarrhea by itself may cause hypokalemia. Cardiac manifestations are the most serious consequences because they lead to arrhythmia and later, if not treated, can lead to cardiac arrest. What are the ECG features of hyperkalemia? The ECG features will happen uh, progressively according to the severity, starting from the tall picket T wave, then short QT, prolonged PR, widened QRS, flattened P wave. So these are the important ones. And then, uh, if not treated, may lead to IV dissociation, VT, VF, and asystole. So in patients who slowly develop hyperkalemia, did not develop rapidly, so if developed slowly, the higher levels of serum potassium can be tolerated before any ECG changes will happen. If you are not sure uh, and, and, and there is no ECG change, please check the serum potassium level again to exclude a spurious result. A spurious result can be the most common cause of hyperkalemia. What could be the causes? It, it might be due to sampling hemolysis, due to tornica, using tornica, or due to a sample taken from a limb that, uh, with, with IV fluid is containing potassium. Anyhow, potassium levels greater than 6.5 with ECG changes required and urgent treatment. The treatments can be divided into three categories. The first most important thing is to do cardiac protection. If there is ECG change, especially widening the QRS, you have to antagonize the effect of toxic effects of hyperkalemia uh, to, to let them uh, protect the, the heart. Then shifting of the potassium into the intracellular space, then increase in the excretion of the potassium. So these are the phases. The cardiac protection starts from the calcium chloride. Calcium chloride or calcium by itself for hyperkalemia restores the normal cardiac conduction velocity but does not restore the resting membrane potential as it was commonly stated. We have calcium chloride and we have calcium gluconate. If you give calcium chloride, you give only 10 ml. But if you give calcium gluconate, you have to give 30 ml because calcium chloride contains three times more elemental calcium than that of gluconate. Shifting of the potassium into the intracellular. Salbutamol, five milligram. This is for moderate or severe one. Insulin and glucose. Why you give insulin? Because if you give insulin, insulin, apart from transferring glucose into the cell, it also transfers potassium into the cell. So it will lead to a decrease in the level. How you give it? You give only 10 units of short-acting insulin plus 50 ml of hypertonic glucose 50%, you give it over 10 to 30 minutes. Then also you give sodium bicarb if the patient is having acidosis. So sodium bicarb only given 
if the pH is reduced, especially in patients with renal failure. How much you give? You give 8.4 percent. Uh, you give 50 ml uh, of that. Sometimes you also give normal saline and uh, lazicus or furosemide. To excrete potassium, you may give potassium exchange resin. This is mainly calcium rhizonium given for uh, to enhance ga gastrointestinal excretion, excretion, usually given in milder cases. If the patient not responding, then you have to do renal replacement therapy. You have to call the nephrologist to do that. Sometimes hydrocortisone given to Addison's disease also. So main treatment is calcium. The main treatment of uh, hyperkalemia, calcium gluconate uh, or calcium chloride. This is in cases of ECG change. Then Ventolin 5 to 15 milligram nebulizer then insulin and, and, and hypertonic glucose. And if the patient not responding, you have to call the nephrologist to do dialysis. Thank you.